All right, my friends, why you need bonds, I got to look over here, okay, good, instead of just CD. So my man, so I'm re-busting out the PC, PVC pipe, still got it, re-busting out, got the bite board here. This is a, uh, this is where I'm going to do my new course, my investment, uh-oh, oh boy, okay, hold on just a second, all right, all right, hold on, hold on tank, there you go. So this is where we're going to do my investment course, investment for a regular people that I, I'm very much looking forward to doing and I can't wait, it's gonna be fun. Um, nah, I'm stoked. Anyway, but I wanna be on the whiteboard because when I did my retirement planning course, it went over real well, man. And uh, I, got a, I got a lot of customers off that, which is great. And um, very, very, very few refunds. And there's a lot of it was on the whiteboard. So I wanna bring back the whiteboard. Um, it's a little bit more time consuming, but, uh, but I like it. I enjoy it actually. and. Uh, I got a different whiteboard. So I want to share with you an email my man sent me here. Um, what's this guy's name? His name was, hold on just a second. The only drawback about doing from here is you can't pause it. I can't, I don't know how to pause a video. Uh, so we're going to come back to what my man said here. Hold on just a second. Uh, old Jerry, all right? Oops, I don't want that. Hold on a second. So Jerry writes in. This is in response to my, my a third, a third, a third investment uh portfolio a third in cash you know, that'd be cash would be money market or cds a third in bonds and a third in long bonds intermediate to long bonds not short-term bonds and a third in, in stocks vti essentially so jerry writes in good question he says uh, no real issues on your allocation but why not just do two-thirds in the short-term cash money market maybe some one to two year cds the short-term yields are sitting there at four and a half to five percent why not take them for a year or two and then decide how you want to redeploy the extra third? Um, uh, he says, I don't think long-term rates are going to drop that much uh, due to already baked in higher wages. So we don't know. But no, I understand. It's a good question, Jerry. And uh, we're going to go to V, let's see right here, the Vanguard uh, Long-Term Government Bond Fund, the ETF, which only goes back to 2010. And then we're going to use a Vanguard Long-Term Government Mutual Fund that goes back to 2000, uh, I mean, 1994, I think is what it did. Let's see. I mean, 1984 or something like that. It went back to 1986. So the premise I have here is that I actually think the long-term bonds have a lot more upside than people recognize. And I'm going to share with you why that is. All right. And so on top, I think they have upside and you're getting rewarded. And this is just my opinion. I could absolutely be wrong, dude. Don't freaking invest based on what I say. This is my thoughts. But for the short-term stuff, it's not sticky. You're not going to keep your short-term rates at 4 and 5%. I don't think. I think they're going to drop the rates at some point. And then when they do, the short-term rates are going to come down. And then you're, we call this reinvestment risk. How do you reinvest? It's so nice outside, dudes. Oh, if you could feel this breeze, I'm going to show you. you. Got that door open. The breeze is just fantastic. Oh, it feels like a fall day. I love the fall. So I can never live in a place that doesn't have a fall. Um, anyway, so the short term stuff, yeah, you're getting good money on the short term, but it's short. We don't know how long that's going to stick. It might not stick for very long at all. It could stick for a long time. We don't know. I don't think so. Now, I was talking to a guy yesterday up in Michigan. I said like the problem, because we're, we're having this discussion with one of my clients. I said, the problem is, man, is that right now the, the federal government with $31 trillion in debt, they owe interest on that $31 trillion in debt. They're going to increase the debt ceiling by $2 trillion. That means they're going to take on more debt. They got to pay someone the interest on it. And someone is, is based on ourselves, essentially, the United States government or Social Security and things of that nature. But someone's going to get paid on that money. All right, so what happens is now that their interest rates are higher, all right, they're gonna, a lot of these bonds are gonna mature and they, gotta, they don't pay off the debt, man. They got to renew the bonds at a certain higher interest rate. The government doesn't have any money. Thus, how are you gonna pay a higher interest rate on all these new debts, bonds that have come and are maturing? How are you gonna do that? And I, you know, we, Phil Graham wrote a piece in 2009 or 10 Wall Street Journal that said, if the 10-year treasury just go back to normal at five to five and a half percent, the single biggest line item in the U.S. government budget is going to be uh, to service the interest. And that was in 2010. Now we fast forward till today, we have $31 trillion in on the books debt. Plus they're gonna add another two trillion. And there's no, remember the deficit is just 
that the addition to the debt, the debt is the accumulated debt we've had. The deficit is a debt you're taking on to finance operations for this year, which adds to the previous debt, which is why the $2 trillion budget deal sound. It was like, we're just going to increase our debt by $2 trillion. Bucks. It's insane. So if we have this massive amount of debt, we have massive interest rate hikes, which they have been without question. How does that debt get serviced? I, look, I don't have the answer. I don't have the answer. I just know that if you look at economic activity, it's not good out there, my friends. And that's, that doesn't mean we're freaking all you know, going to freaking hell in a handbasket. I'm not saying that. But to, to deny the fact the economy is not doing great is to be silly. That doesn't mean, oh, it's a sniffy joke. Look, I'm not even talking that. I'm just talking at the end of the day, the economy is not looking great. Are we running into a buzzsaw? I kind of think so. I kind of do. I think there's a big recession coming. It hasn't hit yet. And when that happens, you have a massive amount of debt and you have massive accumulation of interest that has happened over the last, well, basically since March of last year, and debt that's rolling off and being refinanced at this new high interest rate. On top of that, you have an economy that's on its back. You know, recessions happen all the time. I mean, this isn't like, oh my goodness, we're all gonna die. What happens? Well, the Federal Reserve will say, we gotta lower debt, lower interest rates. I don't think interest rates have a whole lot to do with economic growth, frankly. I, I, I mean, some regard they do, but I think at the end of the day, the Federal Reserve have uh, read their own headlines of how they can, they can just tweak a little knob here and the economy does this. They tweak a little knob here and the economy does that. It's kind of like tweak CO2 and the temperatures go down. I was reading an article the other day, or just today, it said um, <laughs> CO2 parts per million is the highest in history. This is from Bloomberg, I said. I said, how do you know that? How do you know that CO2 parts per million is highest in history? And it's just not true. I mean, it's just not, man. Because if you were to say that, then how do you look at the medieval warm period, the little ice age, I just all this stuff is just dumb. And the whole point is we just tweak this knob, the arrogance of human beings, and we'll solve the climate change. It's so freaking stupid. Anyway, the, uh oh, here he comes. He wants to come back in. All right. So the point being is my thinking is that the long-term rates are going to come down. All right. Now, I could be wrong. They could stabilize where they are now. What is the uh, V? Let's see. Let's take a look at what V. I'm going to look at V. Uh, the yield on V U S. And this is on on uh, on on Yahoo. And I'm not sure it's right. Uh, the yield is about. Yeah, I don't think that's correct. Let's one second. Let's go to Vanguard. I'm going to look at Vanguard. We're going to look at the yield today on V G L T. I don't the Yahoo stuff. I'm not not all that big fan of. So we're going to look at V G L T. At Vanguard itself, we're going to see what their yield is, and we're going to go to search. We're going to go to VGLT, VGLT ETF, right there. That's a government long-term ETF, and we're going to click on this guy. I hope the audio is good on this, by the way. I did a test, and we're going to see what the current yield is. Yeah, 4%. All right, so you're getting 4% right now on the Vanguard Long-Term Treasury ETF. So you get 4% just sit here, all right? Now on top of that, if you look at the history, right now it's only up 2%. It's not kicking ass and taking names, it's not. But last year is down 29.35%, my friends. You lost a third of your capital in 2022 in Vanguard Long-Term Treasury. That's crazy, a third almost. The year before is down 4.98. Yeah. Look at that. Do I have my, cal I don't have my calculator? Anyway, so, 2021, it was down 4.98. 2022 is down 29%. You lost over a third of your capital in this fund. So far this year, we've, only, we've recouped all of 2.1%. That's it. So now, 2018, it was down 1.53. 2019, it was up 14%. 2020, it was up 17.57%. And then it gave it all back. Here's 31% right here, essentially. I mean, we're not compounding. I'm just using basic math here. And then it gave it all back. So from 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022 to today so far, we haven't made any money at all in the Vanguard long-term bond fund. Any. Because we're down, up, we're up. So basically, if you just, just basic math. I'm not compounding, so don't freaking throw snipers at me here. That's 30, we'll say 32% minus one. So base are at 30% negative so far, or positive so far from 2018 to 2020. Then we're down 35%. So we're down 5% and now we're up about two. So we've netted roughly, uh, we're down about 3% so far in five years. 
three percent. These are the year to date. These are the year over year returns. So include the interest that they pay as well, dude. So let's look at the last couple of times we've had negative years. 2013, it was down 12.46. 2014, it was up 25%. Hmm. 2008, it was up 22.51. Why was that? Oh, because everything else was falling apart. The markets were getting killed. What did the long-term treasury do? It freaking kicked ass and took names. It was up 22.51. So in some way, you think, huh, there's this thing called flight to quality. When things go south, everyone goes to quality. Until last year. That's what's crazy. But last year wasn't because of people selling government bonds. It's because the interest rates were being raised. So fight to quality. When people get, with there's blood on the streets, people buy government debt. But the dollar is going to be debased. Okay, you keep thinking that. I, I, I don't understand that reasoning, but whatever. That line of thought, that's fine. They're, they're going to default on their debt. Okay, you can keep thinking that. I don't get it, but whatever. What are you going to do instead? I just It's funny, too. And I'm not saying Jerry said this. People think CDs are safer than government bonds. Uh, CDs are backed by what? The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Corporation. It's a public-private entity, I grant you. The government bonds are backed what by what? A corporation? No, by the federal government. And the tax and printing of the, the taxable ability of the federal government to get money via taxes and to print money to pay off their debts. You can argue against it all day long. FDIC is not as secure as the, uh, as the actual federal government. That's just a fact, Jack. All right. So 2008 was up 22%. 2009 was down 12%. Oh, 2010, it came back 9%. In 2011, it came back 30% almost. 2012 was up like one and a half. It's no big deal. So here, look at that. In these four years, we're up 10, 20, 50% in those four years' time. 2013, it gave way 12 and a half. And then 2014, is up 25 now let's look over here. 1987 is down 2.98. 1988 was up 9. 1994 is down 7. 1995 was up 30. 1999 was down 8. 19, 2000 is up to, uh, almost 20%. So the point where I'm trying to argue is that not, it's, A, it's a flight to quality. We know that. So there's some safety in the government bonds for sure. But you're locking in right now. I mean, you're, how long are you locking in a 4% yield? Well, two things are going to happen. The yields will go up if, they, if the interest rates steep, keep going up. I don't expect that to happen much. I mean, hell, the 10-year treasury is almost par with the 30-year treasury now. It's crazy. 10-year treasury is like a 3.85 yield. The 30-year treasury last I saw was like 3.95. Nuts. So I'm not expecting the interest rates to go up on long-term debt anymore. I just, I'm not expecting it. But now you're getting 4% government yield with a with a bond that is down over five years hasn't made any money and then you're sitting there thinking okay if the economy tanks what does stocks do well they're going to tank too what is the one thing that usually is a, it gives you a reprieve against a, a, mar a market tank is government debt but that didn't happen in 2022 because the federal government's raising rates that's why had nothing to do with a flight to quality that was all of a sudden no one's going to buy government bonds. The federal government was raising rates like we had never seen ever in the history of mankind. They've never gone that much that fast that quick, ever. Thus, we got this right here, which is on top of that right there. So my argument, which I think is legit, oh my goodness, your shirt's inside out. Why should we take a listen to you? Don't. Oh my goodness, you have your hat on. You haven't even shaved yet or, even, or showered yet. Why should we listen to you? Don't. I don't care. And my man, Jerry's right. He's saying, why should I invest in bonds when I can just get short-term money that's even higher than bonds? Because I think the opportunity is mind-boggling awesome in long-term debt. I just do. Now, I also got EDV, and I'm sure I'm getting crushed in EDV. Let's take a look at that guy. That's, uh, that's even worse because that's long-term government debt. Uh, EDV. Man, what the hell, man? Is it EDV? Uh, hold on a second. Hit. That's long-term, yeah, extended duration uh, treasury. And that guy has a zero coupon bond. So this is long bonds with no coupon, which is a freaking bear when the interest rates start going up. So this guy got smoked last year. Let's see here. That's what I want. Yeah, right there. So let's take a look. But this guy probably didn't have much of a... Yeah, because he's got, uh, he's got a 4.12% yield right now. Um, and last year, it got destroyed. Yeah, so for five years... This guy has made, you've lost money, about 1% a year. For 10 years, you've averaged 0.97% a year. 
I'm going to do a video in my, um, one of my videos I'm going to do in my course is going to be what did the, ten, the best 10 year the funds for the previous 10 years, what do they do over the next 10? I think you'll find that interesting because I tell you, the last year, 10, the, the performers of the last 10 years are not where you want to be. I'm just telling you right now. So, so the EDV has just got skunked, dude. Let's see what it was, what it actually did last year. And that's, this is my, uh, one of my holdings, EDV. So I go EDV and Yahoo Finance because Yahoo Finance gives you the year over year. I, I just hate when, I wish they just give year over year, man, as opposed to, uh, you know, just what it did one, three, five, and 10. I don't like that. I like year over year. So this guy so far is up 2.5% this year. In 2022, it's down 39.6. Holy crap. In 2021, it was down 6. In 2022, it was down 39. In 2018, it was down 3.39. In 2019, it was up 18. 2020, it was up 23. 2021, it was down 6. 2022, is down 39. So this is even more volatile than the, uh, the VGLT, which is why I like. I like the volatility of it because I think there's money to be made in volatility. There is money to be made in volatility, my friends. I mean, that's how you think option traders make money. A lot of them go bankrupt, but a lot of them can make some money if you time it right. And that market timing, yeah, I get it, 100%. This is a complete market timing, but I'm still getting paid 4% on government debt to allow the market to work as magic here. And I think it's going to, 100%. Uh, 2009, it was down uh, 35%. Whoa, dude. But 2000, oh my goodness. 2008, it was up 54%. 2009, it was down 35. 2011, oh, 2010, it was up 10. 2011, it was up 56%. 2014, it was down, it was up 44%. Where in 2013, it was down 19. The point being is, if you look at these bond funds, Whenever they get smoked, usually the following year, they come back strong. Will that happen again? I have no clue. But if I can sit there on secure money, making 4% a year, I'm taking advantage of it. All right. Love your thoughts. PVC pipe is back in option, dog. Back in option. Back is three-fourths. Look at that guy. Back in. We're bringing it back. We're bringing back the band. You see that three-fourths? Right there. I haven't done much in PVC for a while, but I used to love I freaking PVC can solve all your problems. PVC can solve all your problems. How do we get PVC from solar and wind? Yeah, love your thoughts, we'll see you.